Hello, this is Mike from Windows 7 Forums. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Windows Server 2008 Standard Edition. As you can see, we're at the boot menu now. We select our CD-ROM DVD drive to boot from, and Windows is loading files. Uh, we begin the installation process by waiting for Windows to start booting. At this time, we'll, again, we'll be installing Windows Server 2008 R2. I'll go through some basic steps with you and we'll accelerate the process of installation so that's easier for you to understand. As you can see, the installer is now loading. We choose our language, our time, and our keyboard, and we go to next. We click on install now. And if we have uh, as we can see, setup is starting. If we have a pre-existing data on our hard drive here, what we do want to do is remove that data. So here we choose what edition of server we have, and we have a special DVD here with every edition of server. We're choosing Server 2008 R2 standard full installation, not the Server Core installation. And we hit Next, and we accept the license terms. And we're not doing an upgrade. We already have data on this uh, drive. So what we're going to do is clear it out. What we do is we go to Drive Options. We delete every single partition on the drive. As you can see, we delete the first one, so it's unallocated. We delete the second one, so it's unallocated. And now we have a free drive with unallocated space, 100 gigabytes free, and we hit Next. Now, in a normal environment, you have one terabyte free or something of that nature, you certainly wouldn't have uh, 100 gigabytes on, a, on a, <laughs> a server install. It's possible, but you really wouldn't do it. And in this case, Windows is expanding files now, and we're going to accelerate the process quite a bit, because right now, you really don't have to do anything. This is a very clean install. It's a fast install, and we'll show you uh, as time goes on. It takes about 20, 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes for this uh to take place and the expanding of the files takes the longest. So you'll see the acceleration now as we move on right here. Say we're accelerating now. Normally it would take much longer uh, to do this, but we're just accelerating the process using some video trickery here. Uh, this would take around 15 or 20 minutes to expand those files and then it'll go through the install, uh, feature installation the installing of any updates and completing the installation and then restarting. And now we're coming back and we're completing the installation and we'll come back one more time preparing the computer for first time use. Hello everyone, we're back and we've entered our initial password in order to configure uh, Windows Server 2008 uh, R2 Standard Edition. And what we really want to do here now is start setting up the server. This can be a complex task and it can take quite a long time. Uh, and it involves a great deal of knowledge about networking, uh, especially if you want to turn this into a domain controller. Uh, this is where we're going to have, to have an issue. First of all, uh, we're not going to provide an activation. We're doing this as evaluation for educational purposes. We want to set the time zone. You see here uh, that we do have a certain amount of leeway here uh, with what we want to do, but we want to do the configuration completely uh, within Windows. And what we'll want to do is set the time zone first. So we'll go ahead and we'll change the date and time. Uh, no, we'll just change the time zone over to, I didn't know any better, I would say we are in Eastern Time, at least where I live. Okay, and let me just make an adjustment here. Alright, so what we want to also do is uh, configure networking, but before we even go there, we want to provide a computer name. And if this is the only server that we have, we sort of want to just change the name of the computer instead of the random name that it's given. We'll change it over to server. And 
you'll see here what happens once we do that. And obviously, we have to immediately restart. We'll go ahead and do that now. is log back in and here we are now and now you see we've changed the computer name over to server uh, what we want to do next uh, is pretty much configure networking we've set the time zone we've provided the uh, computer name and we want to configure networking we want to do is make sure that the server itself is using an IP address that does not change and there's a reason for this because if we have DHCP uh, setting all our information this will become a major problem so we know we already have some information here uh, eventually we'll be able to set it so that our DNS server is actually our server itself but if we're using this server for an office environment and we're not hosting anything from it, uh, we will usually have one network adapter, but sometimes we'll have two. In this case, we have one, and we're using this server in a strictly office environment with uh, no outbound uh, activity. We're not using this as a web server. So what we want to do is use the following IP address. We go 192. Dot one six eight dot one dot fifteen, and we'll set the subnet mask automatically. We assume, hopefully, that that's your subnet, and we know that the default gateway, in this instance, will be one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot one. Now, this will vary from router to router, and we'll set the DNS server in this instance to 8.8.8.8 and 4.4.4.2 these are universal open DNS servers when we make this change we'll go ahead and we'll see and make sure that we still have a certain amount of internet access and it's very clear that yes we do so we've made this change now as you can see, we have a static IP address of 192.168.1.15. And here we have update this server. How do we, what do we want to do? Enable Windows Automatic Updating and Feedback. This is uh, something that we may want to change later if we don't like it. And for downloading and installing updates, Usually, when we look at the settings, we see install updates automatically, which is recommended, and install new updates every day at 3 a.m. Um, give me recommended updates the same way I receive important updates. What we want to do in this instance is actually download updates, but let me choose when to install them. The reason for that is we don't want the server restarting all the time. We also set recommended updates because we want those as well, and we allow all users on the server to install updates on the server. In this case we only have one user which is the administrator in this case. And we already have 45 important updates available. Quite a few security updates here. Major, major stuff. We want to go ahead and install those as soon as possible before adding any roles, before adding any features, before enabling remote desktop, uh, and even before configuring the firewall, we want to get those Windows updates installed right away. So what we're going to do is go ahead and install those updates right now. Now that we have successfully installed Windows updates on the server, you may be wondering, well, what use is this server uh, if we have no server roles configured, if there's no advanced features here? We're kind of dealing with a Windows desktop. I mean, what, what exactly is going on here? So we've installed all updates, and it's a necessity because in order for us to connect any client computers to the server, we need to add the domain controller server role to this server, and that is something that we will demonstrate in the server role configuration stage of this video. This will probably be one of the final uh, 
aspects of this video in order to show you how to actually host other computers on the server. Once you join uh, client computers onto the server, which would be Windows 7, Windows Vista, or Windows XP computers, you will actually be able to not only share files between all of these computers, but actually manage these computers with both what is called Active Directory and Group Policy. And that is by joining these computers to the domain controller. But in order to do that first, we have to create the domain controller. And I will go through that process now very quickly. Here we are again at our initial configuration tasks menu. What we want to do is go to add roles. And to add roles, we simply click add roles. Here we get a warning. The administrator account has to have a strong password. Network settings such as a static IP address must be configured. And the latest security updates from Windows Update must be installed. We've already met all of those requirements. So we'll hit next. Now we see a list of server roles that we can uh, use on the server. We have Active Directory Certificate Services, Domain Services, Federation Services, Lightweight Directory Services, Rights Management Services. We have an Application Server, a DHCP Server, a DNS Server, Fax Server, File Server, Hyper-V Server, Network Policy, uh, Print Server, Remote Desktop Services, Web Server, Windows Deployment Services and Windows Server Update Services, or WSUS. With one of the most interesting ones is WSUS, where you can actually distribute Windows updates across an entire network simply by downloading them from one server. But here we're not concerned about that. What we want to do most of all is the Active Directory Domain Services, and that is something that we need to set up right away, and we can worry about DNS and things like that later. Here we see when we click on Active Directory Domain Services that we cannot install Active Directory Domain Services until this feature, Network Framework 3.5.1, is also installed. So we'll add the required features by clicking Add Required Features Now. Then we'll go to Next. Here are some things to note. To ensure that users can still log on to the network in the case of server outage, we need at least two minimum domain controllers for a domain. That is a suggestion that is made by Microsoft that's not a requirement. Uh, directory services requires DNS server to be installed on the network. If you do not have DNS server installed, you will be prompted to install the DNS server role on this server, which we will do. And after you install the domain server role, Use the Active Directory Domain Services Installation Wizard, which is dcpromo.exe, to make the server a fully functional domain controller. Installing the Active Directory Domain Services will also install DFS namespace, DFS replication, and file replication services, which are required by direct directory service. So we'll go ahead and hit next now, and we'll go to install. As you can see, now that framework is installing. And we have quite a few features to install, so we'll be right back when the next prompt appears.